It had been a long time since Moses climbed Mount Sinai, but nobody knew whether or when he would come back down. A ring of clouds surrounded the peak of the mountain. The people of Israel that waited for Moses knew it was a sign of the presence of the Lord. Days passed one by one, and Moses was still busy with his dialogue with God. Aaron was rather worried because the people were now losing their patience. What will I tell the people if he doesn't return? How will I manage to keep the Hebrews in check? I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. If you come for us, Governor. Put it out, put it out. I think you'll never come back down from that mountain. I think I'll wait for him just one more day. It's just a big waste of time. That's enough. I'm off. Where do you think you're going? You can't do that. May you be damned for eternity. Leave us alone. May you be damned, not me, because we're leaving and taking everything with us. I am your grandfather. You both owe me respect. You're just a crazy old man, and you're definitely going to die here waiting for Moses. And they departed without looking back, leaving the poor old man alone. He watched them leave. In the meantime, Joshua was counting the days of Moses' absence. They've all gone, Joshua. What are you going to do? We're staying. Ever since we left Egypt, Jehovah was always there, good and loyal to us. Then I will wait with you. Everybody prepared for the night, another long night waiting for Moses. The old man lit up a fire to keep the nocturnal animals away. The long, starry night eventually went by, and the morning after, what? Look, there's somebody coming here. People, they are our women. back to wait here with you. And we will stay here. We are waiting for Moses to come down from the mount. He is still on the mount. After 38 days, mountain lions could have devoured him. If I go, what will I tell your children about? I love my children. But tell them that their father cannot come back yet because he must obey Jehovah's commands. If you're not coming back, I'll stay with you. I want to see Moses come down from the mountain too. Women brought food with them for the men and the men gladly ate everything the women provided. Mm. You can't do this mm. to Moses and to the Lord. You're about to die, we have to live! Go away, old man! You're tired of waiting for Moses to return? It's not only that. We need more than an invisible God who only talks to Moses and not us. It's not up to you to decide how your God should be. You've never seen him. The Egyptians have very beautiful ones in their temples, you know, and they carry them on the roads, play music and dance in their presence. Why can't we do like the Egyptians? That's not the reason why we Hebrews came all the way here from Egypt. Another prophet climbed Mount Horeb and the mountain lions devoured him. Maybe the same thing happened to Moses. 
My father taught me to worship the invisible God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I don't want another God. Have you forgotten the manna in the desert and the water that came out of the rock? <sighs> you talk too much, Kerr. If Moses' God really exists, I'll fall dead. <laughs> oh. 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 But I'm not dead. You see, everyone, nothing happened to me. I didn't fall down. <laughs> Now, let's build a golden idol we can worship. Wake up, wake up. Oh. What can I do? What can I do? There's a lot of gold around the camp. Let them gather gold from people and build them a god before they rebel. Perhaps Moses is really dead. Let them build the statue they're asking for. It's best for all of us. Building a statue? What kind of statue? The Hebrew people were convinced that building an idol to worship was the best option left for them. And so they gave all the gold they owned rings, earrings, jewels, necklaces, bracelets, and golden coins, too. When they had gathered the right amount of gold they needed to build the statue, they started to work. In the meantime, on Mount Sinai, Moses continued speaking with God, unaware of what was going on in the Hebrew camp. The Hebrew people were eager to see which form their idol would take. The waiting was agony for them. The mold is cold. Now we can start demolishing it. God Israel, he is whom you got you out of the land of Egypt. Worship him. But can this golden calf send us manna like the other one did? Is it possible? Of course. This one will do even more. And will he make all that fresh running water come out of the rock? Of course. And not only that. And will he drive our people against our enemies and crush them all? Will he really? Certainly. Only this one is a true God. The Hebrew people bowed down at the foot of the golden calf and worshipped it. All night long, the Hebrews danced and ate and ate and drank and danced until they were exhausted. Aaron was very sad and worried because the golden calf had taken the place that was due to God in the hearts and in the thoughts of the Hebrews. In the camp, the situation worsened from day to day. The Hebrews were satisfied by the presence of their new idol, and they forgot about Moses and his God. But one day, the cloud that surrounded the peak of Mount Sinai finally what? disappeared. The clouds have cleared and Moses is coming down. Moses came down from Mount Sinai holding in his hands two testimonial tablets that the Lord had carved. 
while he passed among the Hebrew people, he realized that what the Lord had told him was true. The Hebrew people had become corrupted. Are you the only ones left waiting for me? And the others? And the people of Israel? Where are they? Uh... Moses was filled with uncontrollable rage. He hurled a testimonial tablet to the ground, no. shattering it into pieces. <laughs> then, with a huge cry, he threw the other at the golden idol. He took a soldier's sword and struck the idol over and over and over and over again until the sword broke. Yet still his anger was not satisfied. He lifted a large rock from the ground and hurled it at the golden calf, knocking off its head and smashing the idol from its pedestal and to the ground. What have these people done to you for you to induce them to commit such a great sin? You know that our people have a tendency for evil. But you, why did you induce them to sin? They didn't want to wait any longer. They would have rebelled. They said to me, make us a visible God that can stand before us and help us. But you, why did you make it? They said to me, Moses, the man who took us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know where he is anymore. I had no choice. They would have killed me. They thought that you'd been devoured by wild beasts. May Jehovah forgive me, and may he forgive you too. Those of you who remain faithful to Jehovah, come forward. I am Abiasaf. The sons of Levi are with you. We are ready to carry out your orders, Moses. In the name of Jehovah, go from gate to gate and punish with death brothers, friends, neighbors, and all those who betrayed their faith. Oh, no! 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 The sons of Levi executed Moses' commands. They ran through the camp, searching from top to bottom and putting to death every single Hebrew that had stained himself with the sin of idolatry. It was a fateful day for the Hebrews. Almost 3,000 people were executed. And Moses again climbed the mountain to speak with the Lord while the people below waited and feared the verdict for their disobedience. Stop now. You, sons of Levi, remain faithful to Jehovah. May you be blessed. As for the others, fathers, brothers and sons, 
They sinned against him and they'll get their punishment. Now I'll climb the mountain of God to ask Jehovah his forgiveness for the great sin committed by the people of Israel. And while I climb the mountain to reach him, praise the name of Jehovah and wait here for me. Immediately, a cloud surrounded the peak of Mount Sinai. Look, the cloud is back again. Moses is praying. He's talking to Jehovah. And how much longer will we have to wait? We will wait here until our Lord Jehovah calls Moses to the mountain. The names of those who sinned against me shall be blotted out of my book, of the book of life, in which the names of the chosen ones are written. Lord, I'm waiting for your forgiveness too. And if you can't forgive your people, then remove my name from your book as well, because I am not worthy of you, my Lord. The children of Israel are a stiff-necked people. That's true, but may I tell them that you forgave them, my Lord? Tell the children of Israel to strip of every ornament and repent their sin. I will also cry with my people, Lord. I will pitch a tent at the foot of this mountain and I will wait to hear your voice, Lord. Moses pitched a tent at the foot of the mountain and it became known as the Tent of the Covenant. When Moses entered the tent, a cloud descended from heaven and hovered above the entrance. This was a sign that Moses was speaking with God. And the Lord said unto Moses, Cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I'll write on those tablets the words that were carved on them. Moses ordered two more stone tablets to be carved, just like the ones he had taken before. He rose early and climbed the mountain again as the Lord had commanded, carrying with him the two new tablets. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening to you. Here are my commandments to the people of Israel. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself any graven images or any form of what is in the heavens above, here on earth or in the waters under the ground. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, Jehovah your God, am a jealous God, punishing the father's guilt through their children up to the third and to the fourth generation of them that hate me. However, I will show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You shall not utter in vain the Lord's name, because the Lord won't leave unpunished he who pronounces his name in vain. Remember the day of rest and sanctify it. Work for six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is for rest and is dedicated to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son, your daughter, your bondsman, your handmaid, your cattle, the stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Jehovah made the heavens and the earth and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the day of rest and sanctified it. Honour your father and your mother, so that their days may be prolonged in the land that Jehovah your God gives you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not desire your neighbour's house. You shall not desire your neighbour's wife, nor his bondman, nor his handmaid, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbour's. This is what the Lord told me on Mount Sinai, and this is what he wrote on the tablets of his commandments. We must all follow them in the name of Jehovah. Jehovah also commanded the children of Israel to build a sanctuary to the invisible God. Only Moses and Joshua, his trustworthy guard, could have access to the sanctuary. The Hebrews were unworthy to enter and had to pray to God away from the sanctuary because they had committed the sin of idolatry and God had not yet forgiven them. 
The Ark of the Covenant that contained the testimony of the Lord had been constructed inside the sanctuary. The Ark was made of acacia wood overlaid with gold. On top, there were two golden cherubims fashioned by hammer, situated one in front of the other, with their wings spread skyward and their faces turned towards each other. They looked as though they had leapt from the box to become guardians of the box and its contents. Moses continuously prayed before the Ark of the Covenant as it was there he had spoken with the Lord. Moses closed his eyes and recalled God's warnings. The night when all the Egyptian firstborn had been killed, including the Pharaoh's own son. The angel of death who visited every house in Egypt to fulfill this terrible mission. The Pharaoh's furious pursuit of Moses, Aaron, and all the rest of the Hebrews as they left Egypt, following the death of his only son. Wherever you want, take your livestock and all you have, and leave right away. The crossing of the Red Sea by the Hebrew people and the end of the Pharaoh's reign. The thirst that tormented the Hebrew people during their exodus and that had been quenched only when Moses brought forth water using the Lord's staff. The Hebrews' exodus, guided by the Lord by a cloud during the day and a column of fire at night. And finally, the destruction by Moses of the idol of the golden calf. Moses recalled all those events and prayed to God to forgive the Hebrews. And when Jehovah saw that the people of Israel were faithful to him once more and worshiped him as he had commanded by offering him sacrifices, he commanded Moses to resume their journey for the promised land. The Ark of the Covenant would always accompany the Israelites on their travels. <laughs>